Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am basically doing a catch up on all the books I've read the past few months. I know I've done a bad job of keeping you updated with just the things that I've been reading and I want to fix that with this video. Last month, I think I updated y'all on was February, so I only have March, April, May, and June to catch up on for you guys. Okay, that's actually a lot more than I realized. We're just gonna go quickly. So in March, I read I read five books. So um, I pretty I'm looking at the stats. I had a pretty good reading month in March. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too terrible. So. Starting off, the first book I read in March was The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk. I gave this four stars. Um, this book was actually interesting. It's a Regency era um, fantasy. It's based in the society where magic exists, but once women um, are married off, they are not allowed to practice magic anymore. And so um, it's actually a lot worse where when they're married off, they have to wear these collars that blocks their magical ability. And do that because the men believe that if the women are, um, have magic while they're trying to have children, um, they'll birth like children who can't control magic. Or like they'll birth like demons or something like that. So, um, the girl that we're following in the story, she's trying to find a way out of that situation because she doesn't want to be collared, she doesn't want to give up her magic, she wants to be free. So, um, there's a secret society of women who still practice magic, who, um, pass along, like, grimoires, um, to other women in secret ways if to, in order to, like, allow them to learn and so she's on the hunt for specific grimoires so that way she can again find a way out of this situation because she doesn't want to be married off she doesn't want to be collared who would and so as she does she meets this um other girl and her brother who are also looking well the girl other girls looking for the a similar thing um while the brother is just kind of oblivious and he's just there um and the story follows them as they're trying to figure out a solution so that they don't have to give up this ha this this part of themselves that they love so much. Um, and I really enjoyed the story for the most part. I thought it was a really good take on like women's rights, essentially. Like it doesn't get super super duper political like that. I mean, it kind of does, but it doesn't. It's still enjoyable as a fantasy series. But I really liked the commentary behind it, um, and I actually really liked the romance of the story. So the guy. Um, she does end up with I really liked um, the support he gave her and the fact that like he never tried to insert in himself anywhere he wasn't wanted or he didn't have a say in or anything like that and I enjoyed how the story ended too so I highly recommend if you're looking for a cool like Regency era standalone the next book I read was We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal I'm gonna be honest I gave that three stars it just it wasn't terrible but I just didn't have any interest. Like, I didn't really care, if that makes sense. Like, I finished, and I didn't have any urge to read the second book. I'm not going to read the second book. Um, but yet, the story was just okay. And I think this is when I realized that maybe me and YA fantasy are starting to diverge from each other. Because I definitely haven't been picking it up. And then when I have been picking it up, I've just had no interest. And that makes me a little sad, because... Why fantasy is where I got my start. The next book I read was uh, Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. This was another Regency era romance uh, fantasy and I gave this one five stars. I really loved it so much. If you, I think my mid-year freak out tag is going to be coming out before this video so if you watched that you saw me talk about it um, but it follows this girl whose, whose soul is split in half and taken by a dark fae or a fae and um she has to team up with this like magician slash like i forgot what his official title is but he's a magic wielder and um 
she teams up with him to find a cure for her for herself and along the way he like falls for her and she essentially falls for him and it's really really cute it's like a it's definitely like a grumpy almost sunshine romance and i i absolutely loved it i'm gonna read the rest of olivia atwater's books because i just loved her character so much the, the fourth book I read was Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. I gave this a 3.5 stars. Um, I have a Sarah J Maas vlog coming out as soon as I can finish editing it. So I'm not going to talk too much about this, especially because it's the last book in the series, um, in the Throne of Glass series. But I will say that Sarah kind of disappointed me with this book because the last two books before this, I actually, well, not Tower of Dawn, but the two books before Tower of Dawn, I was enjoying them and I was just enjoying the lead up that she was doing within the story. And then we got to the last book and I'm going to be honest, it was very anticlimactic. I was not here for it. I was like, this lead up led to this. This is what the lead up led to. I'm disappointed. It's not, it, it's not, it, it, mm -mm. it doesn't match the lead up. So, um, definitely disappointed. You'll hear my thoughts and more of my thoughts in the vlog if you end up watching it, if I can finally post it and get it done. Um, but yeah, that's what all I'm going to say for that. And then the last book I read in March was Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. And I gave this a 3.5 stars. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm probably going to give it 3 stars because I really didn't enjoy it. I've enjoyed, um, the few Tessa Bailey books books I've read so far but this book was just really terrible to me I thought um the girl the main girl was very annoying I thought the main guy was very annoying I didn't really get their chemistry at all and I don't really I didn't really get their relationship it just didn't I didn't really feel like they were really connected if that makes sense so I just yeah I just didn't love this wasn't it for me moving on to april so i read two books in april and actually april was a really decent reading month in regards to like ratings maybe not in major in like the number of books i read but just in the books that i liked i guess the first book i read in april was the seven husbands of evelyn hugo i gave this four stars i actually really enjoyed it i really enjoyed evelyn and her story and i think she out of the entire book she was like my favorite character um i really liked how she was just so honest in her storytelling and i really liked that um despite the fact that she like wanted to be with the person she loved and all this kind of stuff she really stuck to her dreams if that makes sense like I know later on she sees it as a mistake but she didn't really let people hold her back from her dreams and she didn't let herself hold anybody else back from their dreams so I kind of really liked that because she ended up being the one to make the hard decisions to do that and so I really weirdly enough I understood where she was coming from and I actually kind of was like admiring it I was like wow she really is making the hard decisions and she really is being the bad guy for everybody else but nobody's really seeing that like she's doing this for everybody if that makes sense so I really love that the last book I read in April was A Happy Place by Emily Henry gave this five stars of course she's now my new favorite author um in the romance contemporary genre side of things but um, I really love this story. It follows um, these friends who come back together for the last time at this lake house. And um, they really, they realize that they actually don't know each other as well as they thought anymore. And that they, um, a, lot of, a lot of them have been keeping secrets from each other despite their like 10 year long friendship or whatever. But the main girl, the main secret she's trying to hide is the fact that her and her boyfriend broke up months before they come on this trip and from there they all kind of really start to get to know each other again and start to rebuild their relationships and i really enjoyed seeing that i really like i really like stories where you get to see people rebuild their relationships and their friendships or romantic relationships whatever it is and so i really enjoyed seeing this and really seeing them um get to know each other again and resolidify who they are who they are to each other essentially um so i loved that and yeah i just really liked to see too like 
you grow apart sometimes in your friendships because life and adulthood and you go, you're going in different directions so i really enjoyed that message in the story too and it's not a bad thing that that's happening it's just how life works and you just really got to work hard in maintaining the relationships if you really want them so next is may i only read one book <laughs> which i think that's because may i believe i tr was traveling i either traveled or it was just the end of the school year, so a lot was happening. But the only book it made that I read was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mast. And I gave this three stars. I'm going to be honest. I don't like Feyre. I think she's kind of stupid. And I think the things that were happening in this book were very unbelievable. <laughs> in a way. Because, like, how do you go from being your soul, like, the family's soul provider... To what you end up being later in the book. I just think she could have been smarter. She could have made smarter decisions. She was too trusting. Everything about the situation she was in was very, very sus. So I just, I just want to say that. Um, I'm doing a vlog for this series. So I'm not going to say too much. Because you'll see like my thoughts throughout the book in that thing but i'm just gonna say like it's not looking good for this series it's not looking good for miss moss i think though i think i think crescent city might be her one hit wonder for me i don't know we'll see um then again she still has the third book so it could be a flop too and then in june the last month oh i'm getting through this really quickly i read i read six books i read six books in june amazing the first book i read was a shadow crown by melissa blair this is the second book to a broken blade which came out last year and i gave this five stars i think it's been the best sequel i've read so far this year um i'm not going to go into details because it's a sequel but the first book follow is based in this world where um magic is dying humans are in charge and um the fae have died out and the only thing left are the elves and then the halflings and the halflings have been enslaved by the humans for like a lot of years and so when we start the story the main la lady we're following she is the king's top assassin um and she is just like depressed she hates she kind of hates her life and she's just not doing well so when the story starts she's also like a functioning alcoholic and then as the story goes on she starts she finds like a renewed um motivation to take the king down and really end his reign and save her people the halflings and so um from there the story is her like like redeeming trying to redeem herself for her past crimes but also really trying to find a way to um take this king down when i tell you like so the first book ended on a really intense cliffhanger and i was like damn i gotta read the second book so the second book starts where the first book ended off and the second book when things end is still very intense it's not really a cliffhanger but it's still intense and i just need my third i just need the third book so i can know what happens next so melissa blair if you're reading this if you need if you have any arcs if you need any Body to to test read i'm here for you so the second book i read was the high mountain cart by ak mulford i gave this three stars i didn't like this as much as i was hoping it was just like okay the story was kind of weird um it follows this girl who they live in like this kingdom that's split up into five regions and each region is a court of i think witches and so the red witches when you start the story have been wiped out or so they think and so the go the girl that we're following she's one of the few red witches left and she managed to survive the massacre and so she's just been living in hiding um for a very long time but this other guy who turns out to be a prince finds her and he requests that she helps him she help him um save her people and then they go on this adventure and they do that and i just like was underwhelmed by the story to be honest and i thought this was a series but i learned that the other books are just companion books so like you follow a different person as you keep going and so i was like yeah i'm not interested in that so 
I read the first book and I'm gonna be done and I'm probably gonna just give it away or something. The third book I read in June was Fourth Ring by Rebecca Yaros. I give this four stars y'all. I'm so shocked that I like enjoyed this book <laughs> because I don't read hyped books like this. Like I don't like read them at all usually or I like avoid them because there's so much controversy or so many opinions. But I actually really liked Fourth Wing. Um, did the plot make sense? Not really. Was I here for the vibes? Absolutely. And was I here for the dragons? Absolutely. freaking loop. I think the coolest thing was the dragons in this story. But overall, um, she made some interesting decisions character-wise and plot-wise. So I'm intrigued what she's going to do in the second book. Because when you end the first book, it does end on an interesting note. So I'm intrigued to see how she kind of pulls her strings together and how she's going to like explain the ending. And then... The next book I did, I did a reread of From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitage. I didn't write this because it was a reread, but I just wanted to, I want to reread the series because there's so many books that have come out and I feel like I just sped read through, through them all. So I want to take, I want to go back and take my time and reread them again just to make sure I like the series because again, I sped read the, I sped, I was speed reading through the, all these books that she's been putting out and I... I literally cannot tell you if I genuinely enjoyed them or if I was just into it because of whatever. So I want to reread and take the time and make sure that I want to keep investing in this series before I buy any more books because Sis has been popping them out like candy and it's, it's a lot and it's a lot of money. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm working on. Um, but I did actually enjoy my reread of the first book. I actually genuinely did like the first book. Um, so... Now I gotta see, did I like the books beyond the first book, or was I just in into the into it? The next book, the fourth book I read in June was The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. I gave this a 3.5 stars. It was okay. It was like a cute little romance. Um, it didn't really give me, like I wasn't in love with it, but I didn't hate it either. It was a good like palate cleanser, I think, from all the fantasy I had been reading. Um in June so it was like cute it's like a cute little um friends to lovers um like this girl and this guy they've been friends since high school um the girl is a ballet instructor and the guy is a professional football player and um they've they like each other they've liked each other this whole time but they're afraid to like admit it to each other because they don't want to ruin their friendship and there's a little bit of fake dating sprinkled in but I liked it. It was cute so far. I really actually liked their relationship. They had a really solid friendship and I really liked how genuine they were with each other. And um, I really liked the mental health aspects that played a role in it too. So if you're looking for a good read, I'd recommend that. Um, it's pretty cute. I'll probably give Sarah Adams another try with some of her other stuff too. And the last book I read in June was Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Um, I gave, I also gave this a 3.5 3 stars. I thought it was cute for the most part. Um, the romance was kind of, like, on the back burner of the story, which I guess is fine. Um, I maybe would have liked it a little bit more if the romance was a little bit more forefront. Uh, but overall, it just follows this character who has lived her life, um, in a guild, like, fighting battles and stuff. And she decides that she wants to basically retire and open up a coffee shop. And so, it's just, like, her... It's just following her journey through that and like the struggles she has with the coffee shop and her really growing and just finding who she is essentially outside of like all the violence and killing that she was doing uh, overall. And I really liked it. It was really cozy. Um, I definitely want to give Cozy Fantasies a cup like a try now because I, I liked the, the pacing and the setting of the story. But yeah, it was it was kind of okay. I wasn't in love with the story, but I, again, I didn't hate it too. So it was a nice, again, palette cleanser from all the intense fantasy I'd been reading. Look at that. We made it through the video. Um, this, these were all the books I have read the past few months. Hopefully I won't do this again because I hate, I hate building them all in one video because it's a lot. Um, but if you liked the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave about that in the comment section. Let me know some of the books you've been enjoying the past couple months. Um, if I haven't read them, I would love the recs for when I decide to start buying books again. And uh, if you 
like the video, please like it down below. And if you want to see any more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. You are awesome flowers in a world full of weeds.